Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. We're going to have a Canadian shootout. Of course, there won't be any guns. Between a Luban hand plane and a Wood River hand plane, both number sixes. Want to know what I think? Which is the best? Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. So what is a Luban? I have never seen one. I have never used one. In fact, until a day ago, I didn't even know such a thing existed. But apparently they're sold elsewhere outside of North America. And I have not, well, we actually, we, opened, we put the lid off, but we have not taken the plane out of the box. Jake actually ordered that from a UK distributor. This is a Wood River that is uh, manufactured for woodcraft in the US. We distribute them in Canada. The number so six. having never opened this one, and this is brand new in the box, you'll see we're gonna take it out of the plastic. Everything we're gonna do, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, and I'm gonna try to hold my bias, although I, I represent these for a reason. I was actually involved in the development of them way back in 2008 when I, uh, I worked for Woodcraft. But I'm going to try to give you the straight goods. Okay, so first things first. Uh, a Wood River in the U.S. sells for $270. And the Luban in U.S. dollars is $200. Now, if you've got to bring it over here from the UK, obviously you're looking a little more than that, but you'd have to pay shipping too if you're ordering this online. Uh, where's it made? This states that it's made in China. I'll just tell you real quick. It says number six, 17 three quarter inches long, two and seven eighths wide sole. Um, what else does it say? Weighs 7.9 pounds. And I can tell you from experience, from knowing that it's made out of ductile iron. It has a, the blade is similar to A2. And this one, I'm not sure what this is, Luban, Authenticity and Humanity. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, it says ductile iron base and frog. That's probably the same thing. Stainless steel lever cap, I think that would be the same on both. Lightly finished wood handle, not quite sure what they mean by that. High carbon blade, steel blade. 25 degree blade angle, eighth inch thick. That's the same on both. Tools require minimal tune-up prior to use. Well, I would challenge that, but okay. Well, let's open up and see what we got. Oh, this looks extremely familiar. Well, actually, let me, let me just take this right to here so you'll see what I mean. And I don't have any prior knowledge of where these come from, so. I know a fair bit about these. For what it's worth, that's identical packaging. And this is, uh, this is pretty much the exact same. Okay, let's do a side by side. So it's, it can't be the same casting because if you look, and I've got them lined up, the number six is different. This cross piece is in a different spot than this one. Certainly the lever caps look, I mean this is identical, that's identical. They both use Babinga handles. Now I, I went through and redesigned the handle for, for Woodcraft probably five years ago. And the idea was to tip it forward and to allow a, to your, more of your pinky to sit down in there so it wasn't squeezing your hand. And I'm just going to see if I can... Yeah, okay, so that's... Yeah, if you, if you look at them side by side, you can tell that this one, this is different. This leans forward more, whereas this one is more upright. A little bit of a difference there. Now, I've had a lot of folks claim that these are the same plane, but it's real obvious that that is not the same casting. And one may have copied the other, I don't know, but that's a completely different casting. Now, I'm gonna weigh them, and we'll just see what we got. Let me turn this thing on. Okay, this is in grams. 
So this one comes in at, stop moving, 33706. And this one comes in at 3,804. So approximately 100 grams heavier. And I was looking a little closer at this and the uh, casting is a little bit thicker on, on the Luban than it is on the Wood River. All right, now let's take these off as promised. They're always tight, by the way, in shipping just so that they stay put. Now let's look at the lever cap. Um, wow, <laughs> looks identical on the bottom side. I would guess and say it's made out of the same material. Outside of the fact that there's a different name cast into it, that really looks like the exact same piece. Well, I, now they're, yeah, it might be finished a little bit differently. There's a little more rounding on this, but really close. Blade and chip breaker. I'm just going to set those aside for a second. Take a look at these. So these screws are a little bit different. You'll notice this one is flatter on the top. This one is rounder. And we're getting, we're getting nitpicky here. Okay, well, here's a huge difference. So look, at this is the lateral adjustment lever. And this, this is really important because it controls one of the main functions of adjustments on the plane, which is adjusting your lateral adjustment so that you can uh, put your blade parallel to the sole. You don't want one side sticking up higher than the other. And this lateral adjuster actually is made out of one, two, three, four, five, six pieces if you crank the screws, and it has a bearing on the bottom. So this spins. That round bearing fits inside this long slot in the blade, and it just makes the operation a little bit smoother. If you look over here, this lateral adjustment, and I would, okay, I'm showing my bias, but I would choose the, the Wood River already just because of this. This is really flimsy. A piece of relatively thin steel that is bent here, but down here you simply have a bump, and now you've got metal grinding on metal. Not a huge deal, but under the pressure of the lever cap, this one, that just means that that's not going to be nearly as smooth as this one. So big bonus points over here for the better lateral adjustment. Now if we look at the uh, yoke, I'm going to take the adjuster knob off. Now this is used to advance and retract the blade. And the larger diameter it is, the more torque you're afforded. And if you've got older fingers, you're really going to appreciate that. So look at the difference on these. That's quite a bit. They look very similar, other than that one's a larger diameter. So this is the one that I would choose over that. In fact, that was one of the recommendations that I had made to Woodcraft originally. Now, the, as far as the thickness of the casting, if you wanted a precise adjustment, that really isn't terribly uh, feasible because when they take the rough casting and they put it in place and start grinding it square, if you look closely, this is going to be a little bit thinner here, a little thicker there. So it's not, not something that you, you would expect to be bang on. You want your square side, your sides square to your sole, but a little bit of dairy variation up here is not a big deal. But this is substantially thicker, so I'd give them points for that for sure. Okay, so these are the, uh, the, both, the frogs on both of these are the bedrock style, which simply means patterned after the Stanley bedrock, you could adjust the throat of the plane, that's the area where the shaving comes out, by moving the entire apparatus forward with the blade and chip breaker in place. In other words, unlike most planes that folks have where you have to disassemble the plane to access two screws here, these have pins that are accessed from behind so this whole thing can stay together and you can easily adjust the throat because you can actually see it. Now, something else to point out. If you look at the shape of the frogs, just to tell you that they're not, they're not made and simply a rebranded item, you look at this recess where the frog retaining pins are, you see how it's a square recess, and over here 
this is round on the back side. Uh, I don't know if there's any difference up here in the top or not, but all right. So in order to get these open or out, you've got to come in here from the back side and loosen what are called frog retaining screws. There's... Okay, we'll just leave those pins there. Just quickly wipe the oil off so it's not all over my hands. Uh, if you're really fussy, the Wood River is a little better finished, or finished a little better, I should say. Uh, the yoke is the same. I'll tell you a little bit about that when we flip it over. The, the milling is obviously different. If you look at the shape down in here, it's not the same on both. This little piece of steel is just a, maybe a little bit different. other than that. So this yoke, I actually made this suggestion to Woodcraft a long time ago, and you'll notice that the yoke at the top has kind of a hammerhead design on it. And the reason I, I uh, asked them to change that was so that when you're making the adjustment and you're advancing the adjuster screw and it's pushing like this, these round surfaces front and back make contact with the inside flat on either side of this little rectangular slot in the chip breaker. So instead of the traditional triangular shaped piece, which ends up bearing on that sharp surface and grinding away every time you make the adjustment, this stays tangent to that inside flat spot and just makes it a little bit smoother. Now, interestingly enough, that's the same thing, done the same way over here, or this is the exact same yoke. Now, Something I'm noticing as I look at this, and uh, you know, neither one of them are dead square, but look at the pin on the Wood River, and it's, it looks like it's been screwed, I mean it's been drilled, but not lined up properly. And there's enough slop in this that it might not matter, but I, I certainly don't like the look of that. That could have been better. Okay, now let's have a look down inside. Put the two of them side by side. Just wipe the oil off. The pins look the same. The milled surface, I don't feel any, well, actually, gotta give some points to Woodcraft here, or, or um, Wood River. If I run my finger across there, that's pretty smooth. I run my finger across here and I can feel a couple of ridges where the, uh, the end mill in passing back and forth has not overlapped perfectly. There's a low side on whichever, however it's mounted. So there's a few little bumps or ridges that you can feel. A little more, obviously because of this, where this is positioned, there's a little more room, which yeah, you could say that's an advantage because you're not gonna have as much crowding in there when you've got your throat closed down tight, particularly. Now, when I first went to work with Woodcraft and cleaning up the Wood River Plains, one of the big problems was the boss underneath the handle where the handle sits on that part of the plane was nowhere near flat. And the problem was that when you tried to tighten it down, it would never stay tight and it just very poor contact. So we cleaned that up. So I'm interested to see how both of them look on the underside. And the other thing we didn't mention was the pins, the frog retaining pins and they look pretty similar as well. Couldn't really say there's any difference in the two. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is remove or loosen the toe screw. Now, if you look close, this is much smoother than this one. I don't know how flat it is. I'm gonna take a file. Just run the file over that surface and we'll see what we got. Actually, I'm going to have to clamp that in place so it doesn't move. I'll put pressure right here. Now, 
that's not as flat as I would like. Okay, so if we were putting the, let's actually have a look at the underside of the, that could be flatter as well. That wiggles a little bit, that doesn't lay perfectly flat. So if we put that on there, it's touching here, there's a, there's a ridge line all around the outside a little bit here, a little bit there. So you could argue that, well, it would sit pretty flat. And that's probably enough. I might, be, I might do a little more work. Another minute wouldn't hurt. Let's try the lube end. Arguably the same, you're touching here, you're touching there. There's no really bad bumps, but I'd probably end up spending the same amount of time on both of these to get that seat or a little flatter so that you had really nice positive contact between the, that rear handle or tote. and the body of the plane. Okay, let's take a look at this one on the underside. And that wiggles a little bit as well. Check both. So that's that could stand to have. There's the problem. So I would, put on the shooting board, that would only take one or two passes of the plane, you'd be good to go. Okay, not really Enough to worry about on that front knob to even bother taking them off. They both look to be fairly well turned and they're smooth. There's no, there's no obvious unfinished areas. They've said a light finish. I presume they're just talking about the fact that it's an oil, not a lacquer or a varnish. One more thing we want to check before we go to the blades. I want to check and see how square the sides are to the sole. We'll, we'll check the soles as well, but not until they're under load, meaning put the blades back in, put the lever cap on, tighten it up as if it's ready to be used. Okay, let's check them for square. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my feeler gauge, and we'll start off with thou and a half. So what we'll do is we'll put the square on here, make sure there's no, make sure there isn't any glue or burrs on the square that would interfere. So we'll put this tight to the side, uh, tight to the sole, and then we'll see where this makes contact. So it makes contact on the inside, but doesn't make contact on the outside. So that's a thou and a half. Let's see how far out it is. This is the Wood River. That's two thou, I'm gonna jump all the way up to three. Well, it's more than three. Four is the thickness of a sheet of paper. Okay, so four thou. Let's check this side. Go back to one and a half thou. Okay, doesn't touch there, touches out here. We'll go right up to the four, well, let's go to three. You could argue that it's three. Actually, sorry, that was 2.5. Let's go to three. Okay, so somewhere between 2.5 and three. That's not great. Let's try the Luban. 
go to thou and a half first. Tight there. Tight there. Tight there. That's within a thou and a half. This side. Make sure that burr's not interfering. Tight there. Okay, let's go to two. It's more than two. We'll be fussy. We'll go to 2.5. Okay, 2.5. Not bad. It's really important that you eliminate all of the vibration or chatter in a plane. And there's several points of contact that have to, that come into play. And one of them is how the frog sits on the sole of the plane. That needs to be still. You don't want any movement. So this is on the Wood River. When I put this in place and I hold that, that's nice and solid. There's no, there's no rocking at all. Now I just happen to put this one on and I see what may be, I see what is the problem. I'm going to point it out to you primarily so that you know to fix, check this yourself. I don't know if it's down there on the face of the, uh, of the sole. As I mentioned, I can feel, when I run my finger across there, I can feel a little bit of variation. But when I put this on, that moves. In fact, it moves. You can go corner to corner. Now, I flipped it over and looked. And there's a burr, I don't know where that would have come from, but there's a burr right there. You can see there's actually not a burr, it's a bump. So I'm going to try taking that off. And I'm going to try taking that off with a file and see if we can fix it. I'm going to disturb the rest of the surface. I'm trying to be careful to just eliminate that little bump. Okay, that seems to be gone. Make sure there's no debris on there. Okay, that was, the, that was the only problem. So just be aware of that when you check in your new plane to make sure that you don't have something like that. I have no idea how that would have gotten in there. Okay, this is not a huge deal because it's easy to fix, but let's just see how it comes out of the box. So I'm taking my lever cap, and to make it easier to see, I'm gonna paint the underside. And while that's drying, we'll do the blue band. What we want is to have this surface flat so that it distributes the pressure evenly on the top of the chip breaker. Easiest way to do this, I'm using a Trend diamond plate with the 300 grit side. So I'm using the glass side of my ceramic stone. I don't want to wear this. And I want these two heights to be almost the same. And what I want to do is just rub this a little bit and then flip it over and see what we got. So we're making contact. We're touching here. We're touching almost all the way. I would say really the amount of work that has to be done to this is minimal. And I'll spend a few seconds. Pressure, three, con uh, three contact points. Okay, so when we put this in place on the plane, we're touching from here over to there, and that would be fine, no, no issue. Let's check this one the same way. Okay, now I'm gonna suggest that we wanna raise this one up a little bit simply because we're making contact back here. So I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna elevate that a little bit. Actually, I've got a stone here that's really well worn. Okay, so we're making contact from here all, all the way to there. 
Again, I wouldn't worry about this. That's not out enough to worry about. So that's a draw. Okay, the underside of the chip breaker has a raised lip. So when we set that on the back of the blade, it's designed to make contact back here and right up along the cutting edge. So we wanna make sure that that is flat. So what I'm gonna do is, again, using the 300 grit diamond plate, I've got a blade over here just to get it so that the back end is sitting a little bit lower than up here. Three points, middle and both corners. I'm gonna stay within a quarter of an inch of this edge, otherwise I end up bumping the stone back here somewhere. I'll paint this real quick to make it easier to see. This is another one of those things, it's an easy fix. I'm just curious to see what condition it comes in. Okay, so we're making contact. Actually, if you look at that, we're making contact almost all the way. It probably would take another five seconds. There, we've got contact all the way. So we really don't have to do anything to that. And it's probably 50-50. Uh, 50% 50 of the time they need a little bit of touch up and the other 50% they're good to go. Let's try the Luban, same thing. We'll clean the oil off. Paint the underside. Set it down so the back end's a little bit lower. Three points of contact. Okay, now we're making contact starting about an eighth of an inch in, but we're missing it by about five eighths over here. We'll give that a few seconds. And this is not a disqualifier because I prepare an awful lot of the Wood River Plains. And like I said, 50% of the time we have to do that. So this one, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But we still are missing about a quarter of an inch of it over here, certainly all the way over to this side. I like using the 300 grit stone just because it cuts really fast. You don't have to push down really hard. And the surface quality of the underside of this really doesn't matter. The only issue is that if you have to remove too much material, you're going to end up with a burr on the back side, which I have now. And you've got to get rid of that in order for it to do its job properly so the shavings won't get hung up on that burr. Okay, and this is just the luck of the draw. This was a really bad one. It's taken a long time to get over there, but I've seen that on the, on the Wood River as well. Now there's a heavy burr on the back side, so I'm gonna flip that over to the 1000 side, rest on that bevel, then raise it up a little bit. Just do a little bit of work to knock that burr off. And then you can finish it on a piece of wood or masonite. All you want to do is just flip that enough times until it eventually falls off. Once you've done that, you don't ever have to touch it again. So that's the chip breaker. So the Wood River comes in at 121 thousandths of an inch. And the Luban comes in at 123 thousandths of an inch. We'll call it a draw. Now I am a huge proponent and fan of the Charlesworth ruler trick. And if you haven't seen it, check out the, uh, the video we did, 32 seconds to sharp, or go visit any of David Charlesworth's videos. Smartest thing I've ever learned about sharpening. And uh, David developed this in the early 1970s. This bypasses the need to have the back of the blade perfectly flat, but always curious to see what condition they're going to come. So. What we're going to do is simply do a quick test. Again, we'll put a black strip right along there to make it easier to see. I've got a steel rule, and in this case, on the right side of my stone, I'm gonna lay the blade down and I'm gonna work within a quarter of an inch of that opposite edge. Three fingers to distribute the pressure as evenly as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Let's see what we get. So in 10 seconds of work, we have, get rid of all the black, contact all the way across right to about there. Now the idea with the ruler trick is that instead of having to flatten all of this, we simply put a little polished strip, less than a degree, 
right along the edge. So like a, a micro bevel over here, we're only having to deal with the actual area that makes contact with the wood. This would probably take, and I'd give that a full minute to properly prepare that, but that's pretty close. There's a low corner right here, but not bad. Okay, let's try the lube in. As I said, this is not a huge issue. It can be, in most cases, it can be fixed. There's a few situations where it's not worth the effort if the blade is badly twisted, or if, let's flip sides just to give it a clean surface. If it's badly twisted, or if it's convex and sitting like that, and you just can't fix that because you don't have, a, you're constantly rocking. Okay, three points of contact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's a, that's a really good blade, look at that. That's nice and flat. We've made contact all the way over. Well, just shy a little bit, but that wouldn't take a lot of time to prepare either. I would say both of these backs could easily be done within a minute. So that's, if you can get a blade like that, you, Rarely you're going to get it better than that. Test before we put it to the wood. We're going to uh, put it on this granite reference block and check it with the feeler gauge. Now, blades in under what I would call planing tension. Um, I, I'm feeling a little bit like I hope we're doing this justice. I had to take the file to that. You can see we had those bumps were their dings were really serious, and that obviously was called caused by shipping. So the blade's been retracted, but the tension that you would normally have on the blade is there, and that's how you want to check for flat. So what I'm going to do, sitting on a reference block, is take my thou and a half. By the way, it's 0 0.038 millimeters. And see, actually what I'll do is I'll lift it up. So I'm going to go in the back. Okay, it's obviously touching there. If at any point I can pull this out, then we know it's out of flat by that amount. We'll go behind the throat. Okay, so it's not making contact there. Ahead of the throat. Yeah, it's pretty close. I actually, I would say, I would say that that is within. I'd say that's within a thou and a half over the entire length. I'm just check this side just to be sure. I would prefer that you be able to move the plane like that, but it's tight enough that I'm suggesting that it's within a thou and a half. Now let's take the wood river. Make sure it's clean on the bottom. Okay, so essentially the same effect. Okay, I would conclude that those two planes are equally flat. Now we'll start planing. Oh, I didn't pull that blade back far enough. Now, if you want to see what exactly I did to fix that throat, we'll leave a link below to that video. So this is pulling off a nice shaving off a piece of cherry. I'm going to guess and say that that's a little under a thou. I don't know why everybody always gets excited about the shaving. It's a surface behind that really counts, and that feels really good. So that performs very well. Now, that was the lube end. This is the Wood River. I'll start bringing out the blade. Okay. Conclusion. Uh, performance equal. 
really, really impressed that both of them had soles that were flat. That's, uh, that's how you would expect a plane to come. Not thrilled at all with the, with the out of square sides on the Wood River. And even though that was better, it's not a way we want them if you're using it on a shooting board. We actually provide a service where we go in and square them up so that they are bang on. Now, I had to make a decision. Well, the lateral adjustment lever is a real deal breaker for me. This one is really poor. In fact, this lateral adjustment lever does not meet the standard that the rest of the plane is, whereas this one does. It's, it's that close. That's the, only, that's the only part of it that was really uh, causing me to choose this one over the Luban. But you wouldn't be disappointed with either one. Hope this helped. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.